Hello, and welcome to our Thermoforming Design Project by Clay Fortin, Graham Grable, Ruben Rios, and Casper Verstich. In this video, we will be explaining the manufacturing process of our thermoplastic NASA meatball logo and our results and findings. The fabrication of our thermoformed NASA logo began with the creation of a negative formed logo. This printing took about four and a half hours to complete. This produced a quality negative of the logo that we used to create an imprint and sand to caster a plaster mold. Using the top of a cardboard box and wet sand, an imprint was created by pressing the negative into the sand firmly. Unfortunately, the first cast of the logo came out terribly. The problem was that the sand was not holding the imprint very well and the plaster was too thick, such that it couldn't fill the entirety of the mold. A second cast was attempted with the much thinner plaster mixture. This cast came out much better, yet the extremely porous nature of the sand caused the surface of the cast to be rough and lodged with sand. With the cast ready to be thermoformed, we needed a way to create a negative pressure gradient. This was done by using 2x8s, pegboards, chalk and sealants, and duct tape. The 2x8s were used to form the actual box, while the pegboard acted as a top plate, allowing airflow due to the holes in the board. For the construction of this box, the 2x8s were fastened together using plain wood, screws into a 2 foot by 2 foot box without the top side. We actually had some problems with the splintering of the wood because it was cheap, and this actually affected the amount of suction we could get because it created openings for the air. To remedy this, a wood putty was used to mend and plug any splinter areas, while sealant was applied to the interior edges to further help seal the inner volume. To be able to create this negative gradient, we needed access to the inner volume from the outside. This was achieved by an inch and a half diameter hole drilled into one side of the box. This was the perfect size for the nozzle of a vacuum cleaner to fit nice and snug into it. Oh yeah! To complete the construction of the box, we measured and cut the pegboard to act as the top of the box and screwed it to the open end of the box using plenty of screws to better seal it down. We found that this pegboard was fairly flexible and could possibly crack if we let the vacuum run long enough, but it wouldn't have been a problem because we had planned to be able to remove and replace the top plate of the box if it ever wore out or broke. The final step in our thermoforming was to attempt to thermoform our cast. We started by converting the glass transition temperature of our plastic from Celsius to Fahrenheit, which comes to just around 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we knew what temperature we needed to set the oven to in order to get the plastic to the perfect temperature for forming. A metal frame was created using metal angles and heavy duty paper clips to hold the plastic while it was in the oven during the forming. Yet after multiple attempts with this frame, we made the decision to scrap it and just place the metal on an upturned cooking sheet due to the frame not allowing for an airtight seal. Even with this change, our attempts at a successful form kept failing. The plaster mold caused a terrible texture and we could not get a good enough pressure gradient to form the plastic before it cooled. To alleviate this problem, we decided to switch from the plaster cast to the actual 3D print of the logo itself and add duct tape to all of the 2x2 two two area except the approximate area of our plastic sheet. It was these final adjustments that allowed us to finally get a presentable thermal form that we could use as our final product. Overall, this was a really fun project to do and we really enjoyed the entire hands-on processes and experience. 